Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R740 server. In this video, we're gonna specifically focus on processors, but in the video series as a whole, we're gonna cover processors, RAM, hard drives, solid state drives. We're gonna show you how to install VMware, how to install Microsoft Server Operating System. We're gonna show you NIC, RAID, power supplies, how to put in a rack, plus a bunch more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R740 server. This video is gonna be specifically focused on processors. So let's just go ahead and hop in. There are two CPUs inside the R740 server. There are an LG A3647 socket, which means it takes Intel first gen and second gen scalable processors. Your first gen procs are gonna be your 4100 silver, your 5100 and 6100 gold, your 8100 platinum. That'll be all of your first gen procs. And they are honestly really great deals. And we'll get into that in a minute. You have your second gen scalable procs, which will be your 4200 silver, your 5200 and 6200 gold, and your 8200 platinum. And those have actually come down in price. They're still not, you know, super cheap, but they're way more budget friendly for high end applications than they used to be. So they're a really good sweet spot on the high end side. And we'll get into that in a bit. So all the time people ask us, hey, what CPUs do you guys recommend? And that's a great question. We break it down into three categories. We break it down into our low end processors, our value processors and our high-end processors. And really it just depends on what your application is, which is always our first question when we're building a server for someone is, is hey, what are you trying to accomplish? So that way we have a better idea of what kind of procs to spec in for you. So let's start with the low-end processors. All right, so we're gonna start with the 4110, the 4114, and the 4116. These three are all first-gen scalable Intel Silver procs. They are very, very, very budget-friendly. They're gonna be an eight core, 10 core, 12 core, 2.1, 2.2, 2.1. Point one. Uh, again, all very, very budget friendly, great for low end applications. They're not gonna have the fastest speeds, they're not gonna have the highest cores, but they're cheap and they'll work great for, I mean, everyday applications. If you're just running an email server in a corporate environment, honestly, these are very suitable. They're they're very great, especially if you're gonna be putting um, uh, Microsoft licensing on it and you want something with a little bit lower core, great option as a whole. So silver, uh, first gen scalable procs, and even some of the second gen scalable silvers are great as well, but the first gen for the low end side, definitely what we recommend. So now I'll talk about some of the value procs, which are gonna be still very budget friendly, but are gonna be better specs than some of the low end ones. And this is really, to me, kind of the sweet spot as a whole. So your value procs are really kind of the uh, jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, these are the procs that can handle your everyday applications and handle some even robust applications for that matter, but they're not gonna be as great as your high end. Um, they're gonna be way better than your low end. Uh, they're the sweet spot. These are what we build with on a daily basis. Um, these are the budget friendly procs that are also very good on the performance side. So let's just hop in. Uh, the three that we picked are all first gen scalable gold procs. And the reason being is because they're very, very budget friendly right now. And again, it's still great on the performance. And that's gonna be your 6126, your 6132, and your 6142. All three of these are 2.6 gigahertz, which is again, a nice speed overall. Not the fastest, but not the slowest, right? It's a good sweet spot value processor. And then they're gonna start at 12 core, go to 14 core, and then to 16 core. All these are again, uh, great procs that we highly recommend uh, for a budget-friendly corporate environment. So now let's hop into the high-end procs, which are gonna be much more expensive, but great performance. And there's some great ones that we're gonna get here. So the three high-end that we recommend are gonna be your 6242R, your 6248R, which are both gold, and then your 8256 Platinum. That's gonna be a 20 core, a 24 core, and a, wait for it, four core. And people ask, why'd you put the four core in? Well, let's talk about the speeds. You got a 3.1, a 3.0, and a 3.8. The 3.8 Platinum with four cores well, it's low cores is great option for anyone that has to deal with Microsoft licensing and needs a low core option. So this is why we threw it in there because it's a high speed, low core option that's great for that. So on the high end side, these are the three we recommend. All right, so now we're gonna show you how to install your processor and remove your old processor. But before we do, I'm gonna grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, I have my ESD gear on. We're safe to work inside our machine. So I always like to lay out everything that we're gonna need before we do an upgrade. So uh, first things first, uh, in order to actually remove the heat sink, we are gonna need the T30 bit. It's not your normal Phillips head screwdriver. It is the T30 bit, so we're gonna need that. We are going to need thermal grease to put onto our proc. 
box and we are going to need a rag to potentially clean up the area of our old procs and the, also we'll need to clean up the bottom of the heat sink. So this is everything that we're going to need as a whole. So let's go ahead and toss it to the side and we're going to go ahead and pop the latch, lift the top. And so the first thing we're going to do here is um, just remove our air baffle and this is a really simple just lift it straight up um, I will note on the air baffle it does label all the dim slots and it labels CPU 1 and CPU 2 but it's also very clear on the motherboard it might be hard to see on screen but CPU 1 and CPU 2 one thing I also like to note is that uh, some of the heat sinks look a little different depending on uh, the processor you have inside uh, so this one right here is a little bit taller than uh, some of the um, the ones that you might see out there that you might have at home so depending on the process processor you put in there, you might actually need a high performance heat sink. So just check out the wattage of your processor to just make sure you have the right heat sink. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and uh, start the installation as a whole. So we'll grab our T30 bit. We're just going to go ahead and uh, start unscrewing. So it's a pretty simple process. I always like to use a, a regular screwdriver as opposed to an electric screwdriver. Uh, I just get a better feel as far as the um, the screws coming up and being able just to feel the heat sink actually coming off the, uh, the motherboard. And I also don't want to strip it. Uh, sometimes an electric screwdriver just gets a little over aggressive and will uh, strip your, your heat sink. So I'm a big fan of the standard one. So, all right, once you loosen it up, you technically have these two Two blue latches right here that we're gonna need to push in and when you do you'll feel the heat sink come off the motherboard so we're gonna push the first one and the second one in out and then we're just gonna simply uh, lift this straight up and when you lift it up the processor is connected to this black clip and we're going to show you how to remove this clip and how to reinstall it but it all comes up as one kit as a whole so it's a full piece and we're going to show you how to remove that right now all right so in order to remove your processor you're going to need to uh, look at this the black pieces right here on the clip so we're essentially just going to push or pull depending on where you're at but you just look around and you can see them all and there's everything you need to do so for instance for this one we're just gonna need to pull it out and you can feel it loosen up. For this one, we're gonna need to push both sides in and you can feel it coming out. And you need to be careful as you're doing it. So then we're gonna come back around to this side and pull this one out. And so now I've got three sides out and you can feel it coming out. And we're gonna get this last one right here. We're gonna push these in and it's just gonna slide right out. So the one thing I also want to say right here in this moment, when I pull the last bit out, you have to worry about your thermal paste and you don't want to, you just need to be careful because you just don't want it to flake all over and you sure don't want it to get into your pen. So you just need to be a little bit careful with that as a whole. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clean the thermal paste off. I'm just going to do this uh, off screen because I just don't want it to flake all over and this is definitely a little bit drier and older and you can see i'm gonna try to bring it on but you can see some of it just kind of flaking off as a whole and there's some big chunks which is exactly why you don't want to do it uh, over your system because again you have all those cpu pins exposed and you just don't want them uh, to get uh, dirty and uh, have any uh, thermal grease in them because really you get some thermal grease in there you accidentally uh, damage some of those pins your memory channels will go out plus a bunch of other stuff but here's a nice little start i'll clean it a little bit more in a second so the next thing i want to show you is how to remove the processor from this black clip and essentially it's these two black clips right here that are really holding it down and your black um, plastic is it's actually pretty flexible and you need to be careful because you don't want to break it you can't just like pull it apart but you can kind of just pull this back a little bit and you see when I do that right there it releases the processor so I can essentially pull this back and pull pull the processor up and now it's been released and I can just pull it out okay so I would also recommend cleaning the processor uh, if you're planning on reusing it. All right, so now what I'm gonna show you how to do is to install your new processor into your clip. So one of the things that's important here, we're gonna start pointing out a triangle. So if you look right here, there is a carved out triangle. And then if you look right here, there's a gold triangle 
on the corner of your processor. That's how you know to line up which corner your processor goes in. And then same down here, if you look on your heat sink, there's a, a triangle, and again, it just helps to line everything up, okay? So let's go ahead and just get this started. We're just gonna slide this under. Pull this back, slide this under, and you're locked into place. So we're gonna need to put some thermal paste on top. So we're gonna grab a thermal paste. And you really don't need to put a ton of thermal paste on, just a nice little bit in the middle is what we do. And that's really all you need. And now we're gonna install it back on to our heat sink and then you go, how do I line it up? So right here you have your triangle and you come over here and this is your triangle. So you know that you're gonna put it in like this and you're just gonna push it to get all the black clips in. And you can flip it over and see that it's firmly in there. I always like to put my hand under just to make 100% sure. And when you put it together like this, the thermal paste will evenly disperse over. Some people like to use uh, the little um, uh, plastic spreader and just wipe it all around and that's fine too. Um, we just smush it on and make sure that it spreads nice and evenly and as long as you have enough, you're good. So now we're just gonna slide this back on. And when you slide it on, it'll clip in with your blue clips and you'll have this uh, metal peg right here which uh, helps you to line everything up. Then we're just gonna grab our T30 bit. We're just gonna screw it back on. So it's really, honestly, a pretty simple install overall. They've definitely made installing CPUs a lot easier uh, over the years. Uh, and it, honestly, it's because of the pins. There's so many pins you have to line up nowadays, 3,647 to be exact. You need to uh, have a nice, easy setup. And that's why they've got the clip in place so that essentially you just install the heat sink to make sure it lines up the processor with all the uh, 3,647 points for the pin. So, all right, uh, that's just how easy it is to do. If you made it this far, hey, do us a favor, click that like, smash that subscribe. And if you're looking for any custom built servers, Dell, HPE, Supermicro, we would love the opportunity to quote you. We'd love the opportunity to earn your data center, your home office business. Please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. Thanks again for stopping by, guys. Take care.